Hey guys, welcome to the first day of lesson 2E from Mosimac. So this is a 2E for 2 extension. It's an extension of lesson 2. And although I put required next to today's video, there's actually not a required activity that you need to turn in to echo. And if you're looking for something else to do, um, go back and watch the optional video on the rock identification. So this lesson takes a few days to go through. This is the lesson overview in the slides. There's also a handout from Mosavac that I highly suggest, if able, that you print out and follow along with. And there's some slides that go with Mosavac that I'll be using today during this lesson. So this is the Mosavac, the make on the history of the earth. And there are a few demonstrations that I would have done had we been in class that I can go over with you today. We're going to try to figure out what the law of superposition is and how it can help us to understand the history of the Earth. So right now, scientists believe that the Earth is about four and a half billion years old. Now there's a lot of disagreement about that amongst different groups, but the scientists in geology have pretty much come to the consensus that the Earth is really, really old. Now how the heck would we know that the Earth was that old? Well, geologists have been studying rock layers for years that give us clues to our past. Rock layers contain fossils and um, formations in the rock that can tell us a lot about what Earth looked like a long time ago. And one thing that we know is that the formation of these rock layers takes a long time. So here's a little activity that I did with my uh, classes last year. I'm going to make this bigger for just a moment. What we did is we modeled creating rock layers with some items from our kitchen. Now, if you want to do this at home, ask first. We don't want to waste any food. But you can get the idea just from this picture and listening to me talk. So we talked about the rock cycle last week. We talked about the process of making a sedimentary rock. And as rocks get eroded over the years, sediments tend to uh, lay down in layers. Oftentimes this can be at the bottom of rivers and oceans and lakes. And over time they form what we call an undisturbed column of rock. So what I did last year is I poured a little bit of coffee in the bottom of this cylinder and we recorded the time. Then we poured <clears throat> a layer of rice and we recorded the time. Followed by black beans, dried macaroni, and finally, pinto beans. Now, after we'd done this demonstration and recorded the time, I asked the students if this were layers of rock, which rock layer would be the oldest based on the times that we wrote down? Well, everyone agreed, coffee. That was the one we laid down first, and that was the time that was farthest, uh, farthest back. The same thing applies to rock layers. It's pretty much common sense in most cases. The rocks at the bottom of the column are typically the oldest. Now you know there are always exceptions to the rule and sometimes geologic processes like earthquakes and mountain building and volcanoes can toss and turn and flip rocks upside down. So we say in an undisturbed column of rock, the rock at the bottom is the oldest. So this rule of oldest at the bottom is sometimes called the law of superposition. So last year when we did this activity, I had students color in the geologic time layers as we did the activity. Now, here's an activity that you can do at home if you have the ability to print. Most of Mac provides some little cards with letters on them. And you can use the clues in the letters to figure out the law of superposition from a stack of cards. If you'd like to do this activity and you print off this guide, the cards are all the way at the end. So you can cut out each card and use the clues to try to match up. It's kind of a fun little puzzle and a little game that you can do to pass the time. So buried within layers of sedimentary rock, we also have fossils. Now these fossils give us evidence of life on Earth. They also give us an idea of what happened throughout geologic time. And we're going to talk more about index fossils tomorrow in the next lesson. But this last activity for you to do today is to arrange the Mosamac fossil cards 
into a column to figure out which fossils appeared on Earth first. So back to our Mosamac handout, we're in Appendix B. Each of these cards represents fossils that we would find in an undisturbed rock layer. And if you do this activity, you can use clues from the fossils on each card to figure out which rock layer comes next. Okay, so there's actually two pages. It doesn't have to be printed in color, but you don't want to print it back to back. You can cut these cards out and see what layers come next and what different fossils appeared in each layer. So I don't want to give away any of the answers today. Um, when we talk about index fossils tomorrow, I actually have a set of these cards at home, and I'll show you guys how it looks when it's completed. So today, we just introduced the law of superposition. We talked about how the rock layers at the bottom are typically the oldest, and the rock layers at the top are typically the youngest. And we'll continue talking about the law of superposition this week. We'll talk about index fossils, and we're going to talk about the geologic time scale. So your challenge today, if you aren't able to do the card activities that Mosamac has, is to try to figure out the order of rock layers in these law of superposition practice puzzles. So these are in the main slides. And there are a few different scenarios where you're asked to put the letters in order from oldest to youngest. So let's do the first one together. The law says that the oldest layer should be on the bottom. So which layer do you think is the oldest? Did you guess layer C? You're right. Now what comes after layer C? B is directly on top of C, so B would come next. After layers C and B were laid down, you can see that this igneous intrusion, that's basically just magma that pushes through the rock layers, push through. Now you might be going, wait a second, D is here and here. What happened? This came first, followed by the break. So we have C, then B, then D, and A, followed by E. So we knew E had to come after D, but we also noticed that it went through A. So the correct order is C, B, A, D, and then E. So I don't think I said that clearly the first time we did that, but D passes through A, so it does go C, B, A, D, E. All right, so see, sometimes it even takes me a second to work through things. All right, so there's another puzzle for you that's a little bit harder and a third one. So go ahead and see if you can do that on your own. Again, there's nothing for you to turn in today. Um, if you're able, again, I highly suggest doing the Mosamac index fossil cards since we're gonna talk about index fossils in tomorrow's video lesson. There is nothing for you to turn in on Echo today, but if you get bored, you can go back and watch the Rock ID um, video lesson. And if you have extra time today, you're welcome to go to the next agenda.